I suck at golf. And to fix that, in true engineering fashion, I decided to remove the human element almost entirely. So I built this. This is Gladys, the golf ball launching advanced drum gun it could explode. At maximum capacity, she can fire golf balls up to 200 miles per hour with pinpoint accuracy. Not to mention, she's extremely usable. A professional golfer can drive the ball 300 yards, with only 70% of those hitting the fairway. On the other hand, an average Joe can hit the ball 180 yards with an accuracy of about 45%. And the fairway is a huge area. On an 18-hole course, the fairway takes up 1.3 million square feet. For reference, here's how much of Brooklyn that takes up, and here's how much it would cost in Brooklyn. Now I can drive a ball 200 yards, which means on this particular par five, I would have to get the ball within 12 degrees. And my last shots ranged 70 degrees, which is why it amazes me that these guys can consistently get it within eight degrees. And that's where the issue lies with regular golf. There's just so much margin for error that it's impossible for me to compete. We started with this. This was the prototype. This thing took us from sending balls 20 feet to sending them over 300 yards. Once we had perfected everything, it was time to start the build. Hello, I am Gladys, but you can call me Glad for short. The golf ball launching advanced drum gun. So here's a quick rundown of how to use it. You flick these switches to pick what club you're using and you wait for it to say it's ready, and then you can shoot it. Don't mind the faulty sensor, I didn't know that I had a wire misplaced, but that's all it is. And with everything put together, it was time for a very first shot. We started at the lowest possible setting for safety. Three, two, one. Brilliant. Brilliant. But then a little bit later, we sanded it down and tried again. Three, two, one. And just for good measure, we tried to shoot it one more time. Three, two, one. Ah, oh, crap. The connection's loose. I was debating whether I should use LPG or CO2, and I think this solidified it. Let that be a lesson. Don't try that at home. It's not worth it. Now that my liability's out of the way, let's keep going. Imagine you're in a cramped room you don't want to be in. The room keeps adding people and adding people until it gets to the point that if you add any more, the walls will fall down. Consider this your maximum capacity. Now if I were to open the doors to this room, everyone would rush out until everyone's spread out equally on the inside and on the outside. So if you're six feet apart from your neighbor on the inside, everyone on the outside is also spaced six feet apart. We call this equilibrium. And the faster the people move to equilibrium, the more likely you are to do this. This gun works on the same principles. The CO2 tank fills this pressure chamber until I tell it to stop, which if I'm feeling lucky is near maximum capacity. Then the solenoid acts as the door, so when I flick the switch, all the pressure is released until it reaches equilibrium. Now I've obviously added a couple things to enhance its cool factor, and as an excuse to learn how to code, so I'll quickly glance over that. This is a pressure sensor, which reads the pressure, sends it to this Arduino, and then that will display it on this screen here. Next are these switches, which tell you when to fire the gun based on which club you picked. So it goes driver, iron, wedge, putter, overdrive. Kind of like how Wii Sports does it, except for the overdrive. So if you wanted to use the driver, all you have to do is flick that switch, and the gun will tell you that it's ready to go at 145 PSI. The putter, on the other hand, is ready to go at 20 PSI, so it wouldn't take too long. Finally, we arrive at the rotating cylinder. So if you were to touch this button, it would activate this stepper motor and it would turn it 45 degrees clockwise or until the next shot is ready. So there are a couple things we need to test. How much power does it have? Which means how much crap can we blow up? And how much better does it make me at golf? I won't make you wait. So first up is the destructive testing. One. I'm just messing with you. That was at 5 PSI. Well, let's crank it up. Three, two, one. Three, two, one.
Okay, yeah, that's great. It can pop a water balloon, but what would it do to human flesh? This is ballistics gel, and it's meant to replicate human flesh. I've attempted to replicate this before, but I thought that this was such a big project, I'd go ahead and buy it. This stuff is so accurate, it even makes the sound that a sweaty person does when they stand up from a leather chair. Anyway, I'm gonna go shoot it now. For legal reasons, we're looking for a non-lethal blow, but for video reasons, I'm hoping we see a golf ball sized hole in that gel. Ready? And three, two, one. Where'd it go? <laughs> you almost ate it. <laughs> Sadly, we didn't get anything that we wanted. It was lethal, but no hole. Yes, believe it or not, that was lethal. That would break a skull. All right, not so scientific, but what if glass? In three, two, one. So it's powerful, but can it help me play golf? We have a short and easy par three at the Falcon Valley Golf Course. It's 174 yards to the pen. I'm looking to lay one up there for birdie. Three, two, one. And after the best drive of my life, all I had to do was put it in. And that would make it the fastest hole of golf I've ever played, which is the point. This project took me about four months to make, so condensing it down to like eight minutes is pretty tough on you guys. So if you have to watch it multiple times, I don't blame you. But there will be another video explaining all the science behind it and the engineering. This video is also very costly to make, so if you want to see more like it, Hit the sub button. I need a thousand to make money. Other than that, I don't care about subs. Comment down below what you think happened to that watermelon and have a nice day. Stay tuned for more from Gladys.